First look of uh, Luminar version uh, 4.3.0. This is the latest update. There's really a lot of great new features in there, and I just wanted to just break it down for you just to see what what new features you're getting and it is really a wonderful update i'm really enjoying it so hey without any further ado let's get started i'm just going to go down the list of new features for you uh the first uh feature would be the search bar when you're in the library module here now you could come in here and you could type things like for instance uh if you wanted to find all your jpeg images you could type dot jpg it's important that you put the dot on there because if there's any JPG in any part of the lettering in an image, it'll find all that kind of stuff. So if you just want to look for an extension JPEG, do a dot JPEG or a dot DNG. And then it'll tell you all files with JPEG 12 items. So you click that and there they are. Or you could do like a dot CR2. That would be a Canon RAW file. There's 439 items. You can click that. And there they are. And uh, let's see, what was the other thing? Or you can also go like, if you have a file name, like uh, I have one called Purple Flower. And you'll see there's one item there. And if I click that, there's that image right there. So that's pretty cool. The search feature is a really nice addition. Next, we come to performance uh, improvements. And one of those would be it opens uh, raw files quicker. So Let's go and search for raw files, CR2, I didn't put the dot on there, 439, so obviously I don't have any names with CR2 in them, okay. So here's some CR2 raw files, let's just find one here. Let's go with this guy right here, so I'll double click it and open it up. Yeah, and as you can see, it opens up really quickly. So that is one of the improvements. Now, how fast they'll open up will be based upon your actual computer spec. So all computers, are not created equal as we all know so it, it you're it'll be different depending on your computer but i would assume it would definitely be faster but i should never make assumptions you know what they say about making assumptions okay uh the second performance feature is all tools are optimized to work twice as fast or up to three times as fast in the case of the accent ai tool and even the augmented sky tool is increased in its performance. So let's go to edit here. And I have AI enhance opened here. So let's just drag this slider, AI, AI accent. And yeah, look how quickly that responds. So that is just instantaneous for me here. And again, mileage may vary depending on your computer. But yeah, that's working out really nice. I'm definitely a big fan of performance improvements. Let's try AI structure here. Let's see how that responds here. Yeah, so that's working out nice too. So that's responding nicely. Let me just uh, double click this, set it back. Let's try the uh, details enhancer, small details. Yeah, pretty good. There might be just a slight lag there, but yeah, there's definitely an improvement there. So that's pretty cool. So the way I understand it, Luminar 4 is using uh, less of your computer's memory, uh, giving us those uh, better responsive sliders and things like that. I'm going to go ahead and reset this details enhancer here. Uh, the other thing I wanted to say that, uh, that Luminar do point out also that speed improvements depend upon your computer's hardware. So that they do note that with the update. The next update is if you come over to this icon right here and click it, you're going to notice now you have a 500 PX uh, uh, section here. So if you click on this, you can go ahead and upload images right to 500 PX. So I used to do a lot with 500 PX, but you got to just verify yourself here and log in. But you can go ahead and upload pictures right to 500 PX. So if you're a big fan of 500 PX, you're going to like this new addition. Next up is in the AI Augmented Sky. Now they've added a new object, and I'm sure you're all going to be excited about this one, the Space Shuttle. So click Space Shuttle here. And uh, then you can click Place Object, move it around. Now they say the improvements are flip and position sky objects. I believe you could always uh, position them, right? So I don't know what they mean by that. I don't use this that often, so hey, if you know what that extra feature is, or if it is an extra feature, let me know. But let's position it here, and then you can flip it. This is new here, flip object. So see, you can flip it. 
which is cool. So we got a space shuttle and now we can flip the object. This next feature is something I really like and that's dealing with the looks. So now with your looks, when you have your looks up here and you hover over the looks, you'll see them change on your screen, which is really nice. So you can go and go through all your different looks. And when you find one that you like, say, I like this in black and white, give it a click. And here's another feature they've added. Now you can go hit head and reset that look. If you say, yeah, I'm not sure about that. I'm going to try some others. So you can come here to reset adjustments, click on that, and it'll revert it back. Now I've had some issues, I think, with older looks. And I'll show you. Let me grab some older looks here. And let me try this one, Tonality Toning. This particular one, I thought, oh, this is cool. I'm going to try this Tonality Toning. So I'm coming through here, hovering over these looks. And I'm saying, oh, yeah, fun. That's cool. I like that one. Oh, I like that color there. Yeah, I'm going to try this color right here. So I click on it. And then I come to say, nah, I don't think I want it. So I click on Reset Adjustments. And I say, Houston, we have a problem. It goes black and white. Uh, that's probably a bug, or I don't know if it's due to the fact that it's an old preset, but I wish uh, Luminar would maybe fix that. So here's my workaround for that. You can either come down to this history icon right here and go to history and, you know, go back to the original, or you could come to these three dots right down here and click revert to original, and that'll fix that for you. Other than that, the looks work just like they did before. Now we have faster access to the uh, crop and rotate tool. You know, you can come up here to the crop tool right here, or now you can come over here to the canvas tools and you're going to find crop and rotate right in here. And as soon as you click that, your uh, crop dialog comes up here and you can flip the image horizontally, which is nice. You can flip it vertically and you can rotate it. And the crop stays, the crop tool stays with it no matter what you do with it. However, you rotate it, which is really nice. And then, of course, you have your aspect ratio, your original. And, of course, you have your different um, settings here. Like, you can do a 1 to 1 crop. Or, possibly, you want to do an 8 by 10. You can click on 4 by 5. And then you can size it accordingly. And once you get it to where you like it, uh, you just click Done. But that's a really nice addition there. It's a lot quicker to get to now. Here's a new feature I think you're really going to enjoy, and that's in the AI Sky Replacement and also in the AI Augmented Sky. When you click on Sky Selection, you now have um, Show Custom Skies. So if you click on that, you'll see all your custom skies in here. And then you can add to this collection here. And once you add to that collection, they're going to show up in... Um, right here here's all your custom skies so like here here are my custom skies that i have in here and i'll show you how to add one to this collection here so this is a nice nice improvement and you also have that feature on the uh, augmented sky as well so you can come to object selection and you have that uh, show custom sky objects and i don't have any in here right now but if you click this it'll navigate you to that folder and so you can add your uh, custom augmented sky objects into here. So let's go back up to sky replacement. And let's just take one of my skies, for instance. Let's do this warm skies collection three. So I click on that and that sky will pop in there. And of course you can position it and then make all your other adjustments that you need to do. Now to add skies to, you know, your own, your own skies, to add it to this AI sky replacement uh, section, just click on this drop down right here and click show custom skies. Now when you do, you're going to get this folder where the where Skylum or Luminar are keeping all your custom skies. And then all you need to do is what I do is I'll just open up a new finder window. And I'll navigate to where my skies are located. They're in this drive right here. In this picture set right here and in here I have some free skies that I've got in the past from uh, Skylum, back then Mac Fun, And so all you need to do is open up a folder here or any, any folder where you have skies collected at, okay? And then just pick one or two or several skies. I'll just take one right here. Let me just take this sky right here. I'm just gonna click it and I'll just drag it up here. Now this is a Mac, it'll be different probably on a Windows, but you basically know how to navigate your computers, I'm sure. But there it is right there. Now I can close these down. 
And I had four skies before, so now when I click her, I should see that I have five skies. So one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So I added another sky. So it's just that simple. But this is going to make it really nice when you build up a sky collection. You can add it to the uh, custom sky folder. Here's the last feature I'm going to show you, and that's an optimized masking tool. So on this image here, say I wanted to add some more detail to the bird or some more structure. So let me just pull up the AI structure mount. I'll just take it up a good bit here. And I only want to apply it to the bird. So now we go to Edit Mask, and we go to Brush. And um, let's see, we want to paint in. Okay, so I have it on the plus. So here's the new feature. Notice when I start to paint, see the overlay? You got this new overlay that shows up so you can see everywhere that you've painted. Now, this is, to me is really a welcomed feature to this to the masking here. I think it's going to make your workflow go a lot faster, and it's really cool. So say I, I painted right there, and now there you can see there's my result. And then if I say, you know what, um, I want to add maybe a little bit right down here. But then you can see the mask pops up again when you start painting again. So I really like that. And then when you're done, just click done. Well, there it is. That was a first look at the new update for Luminar 4 version 4.3.0. A great update with a lot of really cool new features. Um, and you know what? Luminar 4 is just going to keep getting better and better and better. If you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it.